Well, on Manifesto Check tonight, as we started yesterday, pointing out to you the similar policies in the education sector in both the MPP and the NDC manifestos. Now, we're moving to the next sector because we outlined to you the three major issues to the Ghanaian voter as sampled in the polls across all 16 regions by Global Info Analytics, education, jobs, and the economy. We did education yesterday. Today, we're on to jobs, is it not, Dennis? Right, rightly so. It does appear that the political parties are following keenly what the polls are indeed saying. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at what they have on the face of the record, and I say the face of the record, I mean on the face of the manifestos, you would, have, you would see that there's a focus on jobs. And that's exactly what the polls tell us. That's one of the key things that voters are going to look out for in the election will be jobs. For instance, when you take the MPP manifesto, the title is Selfless Leadership bold solutions for jobs and business. Mm -hmm. So you find the emphasis on jobs. Likewise, the NDC manifesto, they have resetting Ghana, jobs, accountability, and prosperity. So mm -hmm. clearly on the face of it, you'd notice that jobs play a significant part of the manifestos. Indeed, the MPP, even before the launch of the manifesto, had hinted that 80% of the manifesto was dedicated to job creation. When you That's read right. parts of the NDC manifesto, the part that talks about um, jobs, they tell you that their topmost priority is job creation. So that is mm. in no doubt. Super. For some reason, I don't know whether it's coincidence or whatever, when you check pages 19 of both the MPP and the NDC manifestos. All on the same page. They're talking about job creation. Page 19. Yes. Interesting. But I mean, there's a lot on job creation, mm -hmm. but we just decided to handpick a few things that will serve as the common denominators. For, some, for each party, they have other things that they are going to do uniquely by way of creating jobs. Right. For instance, the NDC with their famous 24-hour economy, you wouldn't find that in the MPP manifesto. True. So we are just looking at what is common amongst them, some of them. Now, the other thing too that runs common is jobs in respect of the digital sector. Mm. So when you look at that part, the MPP is promising to train one million youth in digital skills. Right. For them, they are pretty straightforward. That's what they are saying. The NDC also says that they have a one million program for coders. In explaining that, they say that they will train one million young Ghanaians who will be trained in digital skills such as coding. They have web app um, development, digital engineering and all that, right. who will take up jobs in the digital space. Okay. They put this or pitch this as job creation, mm -hmm. but we see it to be people who are trained in digital skills. There are many who are asking. The mere fact that you are trained to acquire a skill, does that necessarily transmit into creating a job for the person? Those right. are questions that will be put into, I mean, the, the people who put this together and how these one million people, indeed, if they get the skill, will transform into jobs. Because of course, there are people who have skills and they are still working around without jobs. Right. Now the other thing that also runs common has to do with also in the same space of the digital economy. MPP says that they are going to establish a FinTech fund with a seed capital of 100 million US dollars. That's the equivalent of 1.6 billion Ghana cities. Exchange rate here is um, a dollar is the 16 cities. So that's how it's currently it. 16 cities. Is it not? Yes, so that, okay. this is their own number. That's not mine. That's mm, in, in, in the manifesto. The NDC says that they are establishing a fintech um, growth fund. Seed capital is 50 million dollars. And that is to promote growth in, of digital entrepreneurs. And that ultimately will lead to job creation. Mm -hmm. So you find this as a common denominator in the manifestos of the two parties. Again, when you come to the security services, the MPP is pretty straightforward. They say that they will employ more security service personnel. Of course, they've already made the case of how many they are employing. So it's only fair for them to say that they will continue to do so, so they'll employ more. Now, NDC says that they're going to undertake a critical public sector recruitment based on a comparative human resource analysis gap. This stems from the fact that I mean, this is hinged on their 24-hour economy. Right. Already, we have heard the flag bearer, John Ramani Mahama, indicate that, for instance, when the 24-hour economy begins to run, a major component will be security, for which reason we would need roughly 25,000 security personnel to run that project. Mm -hmm. 
So you would find that captured under this, but it's not stated expressly as you would find it stated in the MPP manifesto. But of course, it's recruitment under the security services. Again, there's also a promise in both manifestos for the M and MPP to establish a women's trade empowerment fund, WUTEF, right. to support women-owned businesses. This, they believe, will empower women and also create jobs. Hmm. The NDC, the most touted women's development bank, this also comes in as a, woman, a women empowerment tool. But of course, the ultimate objective is to be able to empower women to have successful businesses, which will in turn employ, employ other people. So this is women focused? Yes, policies. in this particular one. Then again, when you come to infrastructure development, now the MPP wants to create jobs through private sector construction and infrastructure development and others. The NDC says that when they roll out their big push for rapid infrastructure development, the focus will be for job creation. Now, this also begins to give us an idea the kind of jobs that are to be expected, because not all the jobs will be white color jobs. That's right. Because in the construction sector, you'd find that there are different layers or categories of workers who Absolutely. will be in there. So when we think about job, I think when we begin to read the manifesto in its um, in between the lines, we see that the jobs that are promised here will not exactly be the same kind of jobs. So largely, these are some of the things that run through the manifestos with respect to job creation. Mm. Interesting. And the, 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 the outlier you see there is the process yeah. of how they intend to achieve the end objective. Yes. And you see that also pointed out in this one million. When this one million jobs, that's the training, the digital skills conversation came up, the NDC made reference to the 2020 manifesto because I know it's something that you looked into as well. Yes. That this was captured in the 2020 Precisely manifesto. Precisely so. And it's new in the NPP manifesto with the mm. one million as well. But then again, you see the focus on the digital space and the and, and the advantages in there. Yeah. Running through all the all the job. I mean, both creation. both parties recognize that we now live in an era of uh, it's a digital era, so they cannot do without it. So absolutely. By and large, they are trying to train more people in that space. Mm -hmm. But their thinking is that by training or giving people this particular skill. And now, when you go back and look at the data that you have seen here, mm -hmm. the one that talks about it. When you look at people within the ages of 18 and 24, yeah. for them, their major problem is jobs. True. That's, that's the orange. Yes, uh, that's bar. the orange line here. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 25 to 34, when you look at them two, they are, the job it's, it's, it's is also significant. That's right. Yes. So mm -hmm. what it means is that, and these are the people who fall within the digital economy mm -hmm. or those who can understand what happens in that space, for which reason when you give them the skill, it is their world. True. So it only, it's only fair that that particular group is targeted. But the question still remains, if they have the skill, does that automatically translate into a job? That's a question that needs to be answered. Accept but of course, this is what the manifesto say, and mm -hmm. in the coming days, we'll dig deeper and deeper to find answers to all of these things. And certainly so. Dennis, appreciate you, as always.